In this video, I will identify the appendicular muscles that move the manual region and list the origin, insertion, and action of major muscles that move the manual region. We'll start with a posterior view, getting oriented to the muscles that extend the manual region. Extensor carpi radialis longus is found immediately on the medial side of brachioradialis. They share an origin at the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. But the action of extensor carpi radialis longus is in the name. So extensor carpi, this is a muscle that performs the action of extension of the radiocarpal joint. Similarly, extensor carpi radialis brevis performs the action of extension at the radiocarpal joint. So these muscles extend the wrist, extend the radiocarpal joint. And most of the muscles located on the posterior antibrachial region are extensor muscles that perform either extension of the radiocarpal joint or extension of the digits. So if we move medially from extensor carpi radialis brevis, the next muscle we see is extensor digitorum. And again, the name tells us the action. Extensor digitorum performs the action of extension of the manual digits, extension of the fingers. Extensor digiti minimi is just medial to extensor digitorum. This is a slender muscle that inserts into the fifth digit, into the phalanges of the fifth digit in order to extend the fifth digit, to extend the smallest finger, the pinky finger. Then medial to extensor digiti minimi, the most medial of the extensor muscles on the posterior antebrachial region is extensor carpi ulnaris. So you'll remember that the ulna is the medial antebrachial bone, whereas the radius is the lateral antebrachial bone. Extensor carpi ulnaris, it's an extensor, so it's on the posterior antebrachial region, and it's ulnaris, it's found superficial to the ulna on the medial side. And the action of this muscle is again in the name, extensor carpi ulnaris performs the action of extension of the radiocarpal joints. So a few other muscles that we can see in this illustration include abductor pollicis longus, that performs the action of abduction of the pollux, abduction of the, the largest digit, the, the first digit, the thumb. So abductor pollicis longus abducts the pollux, extensor pollicis longus performs extension of the pollux. And similarly, extensor pollicis longus performs extension of the pollux. In this illustration, all we can see is the tendon from extensor pollicis longus because the belly of the muscle is located deep to extensor digitorum. Now we'll go through more detail for the major muscles, starting with extensor carpi radialis longus that has its origin from the humerus at the lateral supracondylar ridge, the same place that is the origin for brachioradialis. Then the insertion for extensor carpi radialis is the second metacarpal. So you can see the tendon coming down to insert here at the second metacarpal. And the action is in the name to extend the radiocarpal joint. Extensor carpi radialis brevis has its origin from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and its insertion onto the third metacarpal to perform the action of extension at the radiocarpal joint. Extensor digitorum also has its origin from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and 
its insertion is onto the distal phalanges of digits two through five, and the action of extensor digitorum is in the name it's extension of the manual digits. Similarly, the origin of extensor carpi ulnaris is from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And so we've seen now the origin from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus is shared for extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, and extensor carpi ulnaris. The insertion for extensor carpi ulnaris is the fifth metacarpal, and the action is to extend the radiocarpal joint. Now, here we have a deep view of the posterior antebrachial region with the superficial muscles that we've just covered removed. So brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, and extensor carpi ulnaris have all been removed to give us this view. And the major muscle that's located on the lateral posterior antebrachial region, deep under brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis, longus and brevis, is the supinator. And so the supinator is another muscle with its action in the name. The supinator performs supination of the proximal radio ulnar joint. Now another muscle that we can see better with this deep view is extensor pollicis longus. We were able to see the tendon of extensor pollicis longus coming out to its insertion from a superficial view, but now with extensor digitorum removed, we can see the belly of extensor pollicis longus, which is located just medial to extensor pollicis brevis. Now the origin of the supinator is from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And if a muscle is gonna perform supination or pronation of the proximal radio ulnar joint, that muscle will have to have its insertion on the radius. And so the insertion for the supinator is the radius and the action is supination of the proximal radio ulnar joint. Now here we have a superficial view of the anterior antebrachial region. We will start going through from the lateral side with pronator teres, a muscle that has its action in the name. Pronation of the proximal radio ulnar joint is the action of pronator teres. Next, moving medially across the antebrachial region, we see flexor carpi radialis. Another muscle with its action in the name, flexor carpi radialis, performs flexion of the radiocarpal joint. Palmaris longus is located just medial to flexor carpi radialis. Palmaris longus does assist with the action of flexion of the radiocarpal joint. Palmaris longus is a variable muscle that is absent in about 10% of humans. Then located just medial to palmaris longus is flexor carpi ulnaris, a muscle that performs the action of flexion of the radiocarpal joint. So flexion of the hand at the wrist, flexion of the manual region at the radiocarpal joint. So you, you'll notice a pattern with the first letter of those muscles, pronator teres is P 
flexor carpi radialis is F, and then palmaris longus begins with P, and flexor carpi ulnaris begins with an F. And so a mnemonic memory device that can help you remember those order, the order of those muscles, PF, PF could stand for pass, fail, pass, fail. Or if you'd like to end on a good note, you could start from the medial side and work your way towards the lateral side with fail, pass, fail, pass. So those are the four superficial muscles on the anterior antebrachial region. There's one muscle located deep to those four superficial muscles that we can see in between the tendons of those muscles. This is flexor digitorum superficialis. So as the name tells us, superficialis, this muscle is still superficial to another muscle, another flexor digitorum. Flexor digitorum profundus is deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. And there's three muscles in the anterior antebrachial region located deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. So that gives us four muscles in the most superficial layer, one muscle in the intermediate layer, flexor digitorum superficialis, and then three muscles that are deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. And so it, it might help you to remember that orientation with there's four and it's that four, four superficial, then you have one flexor digitorum superficialis, the intermediate, and then what's left, three that are deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. We'll start going through with more detail of the major muscles here. The pronator teres has its origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And we'll see that most of the muscles found on the anterior of the antebrachial region have their origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Now, the action of pronator teres is pronation, so its insertion is the radius Now, flexor carpi radialis also has its origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts onto the second and third metacarpals to perform the action of flexion at the radiocarpal joint. Flexor carpi ulnaris has its origin also from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The insertion of flexor carpi ulnaris is the fifth metacarpal, the hook of the hamate and the pisiform. The action is in the name to flex the radiocarpal joint. The origin of flexor digitorum superficialis is also from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the insertion of flexor digitorum superficialis is the middle phalanges two through five. And the action is to flex the manual digits. Here we have a deep view of the anterior antebrachial region. The pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris, and flexor digitorum superficialis have all been removed to give us this view of the three muscles located deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. We can see flexor digitorum profundus. The name profundus translates to deep. So flexor digitorum profundus is located deep to flexor digitorum superficialis and performs the action of flexion of the manual digits. The two other muscles located in this deep 
group of antebrachial muscles include flexor pollicis longus, a muscle that performs flexion of the pollux, and pronator quadratus, a rectangular shaped muscle found in the distal antebrachial region deep to the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, and the action of pronator quadratus is pronation of the proximal radio ulnar joint. The origin of flexor digitorum profundus is on the ulna at the coronoid process of the ulna. Then the insertion of flexor digitorum profundus is onto the distal phalanges digits two through five. And the action of flexor digitorum profundus is in the name to flex the manual digits. Flexor digitorum profundus is the deep muscle that performs flexion of the manual digits.